I got the Fruity Pebbles. It's delicious. They're not the same as I was a child. I, I, I could have swore they were actual pebbles, but they're flakes now. Rice Krispie Flakes. Mm, maybe I'm misremembering. Confused it with Captain Crunch or Captain Berry or something like that, but still delicious. This episode was quite a revelation to some of the members of the fan base, and I can categorize their, uh, you know, kind of three, with one of them being part two, having two parts to it, reactions. The first one was the, you know, what the fuck, which I think goes with all of them really, but more like they didn't see any of this coming like they didn't realize that there was a third personality or that is even a probability or possibility so their mind was like Pfft. and for them from that group it comes like okay another mystery this is mr robot okay and others are like kind of little myth like maybe i've seen mostly on the critic side not so much on the boards really or the, the active fan base that talks and communicates through the social sphere that um, this is a Dex and Macrio is like another thing that is tire trope or whatever but there's that reaction to where people didn't really see it coming the second one are people that had been paying attention did know that there was like a third personality follow the hint and they fall into the camp of the other thing. It was like Tyra Wellick for a while, way back in season two, which when this theory of the third personality, Elliot, you know, was uh, going on. That turns out, you know, it's not Tyra Wellick. And then there are those who thought, maybe like myself, that it was a combination personality that, you know, Mr. Robot and then Elliot are splits of the original personality and when they merge you have the real Elliot. And that might not be the case. There might be something really going on here. And the, the, the third one is yeah you're following along knew the third personality but didn't actually think it was going to be a factor in the storyline. Because there's so much going on. So your mind was a little blown that way like myself. I was I was in the third category where I I did not think that the third personality was going to be addressed this season. I didn't think even at all. Um, I just think we're just we're going to get the Elliot that we've seen and known through the beginning of the show and Mr. Robot. I didn't honestly think that the third personality would be revealed or shown or any of that kind of a, a merger. Even though I do believe the third personality has been shown to us. and. That would have been, I personally think, the, the real Elliot, if you will, occurred twice in the show. The one that everyone talks about, which is the Halloween scene, where Elliot uh, is uh, with Darlene. They're trying to catch up. They hadn't really seen each other in a while. He explains to Darlene what happened to him. He got locked up in the server, had to do some time because he freaked out. Um, they were getting high. They were, I don't think they were in ori the original apartment that Elliot we know has. This doesn't seem like a different apartment. And he goes in and has a jacket, their dad's jacket, and he puts on the mask from their favorite uh, Halloween movie. And he basically lays out the plan. And it, the voice is a little cadence is different, the voice is a, a little deeper, if you will. And at first, I guess you're supposed to assume that the person behind the mask is Mr. Robot, and, you know, wearing the jacket and everything, but I don't think that's the case. I think, really, that is the original personality, the, the more relaxed, kind of confident, a bit dork, if you will, um, Elliot personality. And then... The other revelation, I believe, was in season three where we saw Edward Alderson die in the movie theater, the Back to Future episode where he's with the ghost, and we you get that flashback. 
and we see the Elliot just grab his dad's jacket, go into the movie theater to watch the movie, leaving his father dying in the movie theater, presumably. And you see him talking to someone we assume to be Mr. Robot. Like, that's how early the disconnect in Elliot's mind, the manifestations of the different personalities, if you will, that he has, um, was a present. And I think that kind of dark, disinfected, disenchanted with the world personality is the real Elliot. And we just haven't really seen that personality yet. And apparently all the other personalities in his head, his mother that we see at the end of the episode, um, his younger self, presumably the fact that Elliot and Mr. Robot don't know who he is, are afraid of this personality. There's something about this personality. And maybe because it's the admin controller, if you will, controls everything, uh, puts it in root, does everything, can you do whatever he wants or whatever at any time, that might be their fear that they'll be dissolved uh, out of existence. That was something that um, Elliot's father was very deeply concerned about. Uh, or the Mr. Robot um, at the graveyard during the first season that he would go away again. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so that was like the big shishin go of that episode that just kind of blew people's minds. And for me personally, the fact that they're actually going into the third personality and it's going to factor into the season uh, allows for me, I think, to tie a lot of a lot of things that were going on with Elliot as a person, how we kind of got here, and some questions I personally have had about Elliot as a character. I like how he, being so smart and doing all this legwork, if you will, to social engineer people, to lay out the hacking, to have all the, these different plans. Like he, Elliot, or Mr. Robot, the combined personalities, if you will, had or the third personality had stage one and stage two already planned out even if he didn't have everyone within the F society on board with stage two potentially he already had it all planned out what that stage is um for him not to know and i've said this before in previous episodes for him not to know that white rose is in or associated with the washington township plant that there's a project in there um, that his father helped build um, responsible for his father's death, the leaking of the different chemicals that caused the cancers, that um, Elliot didn't know. Elliot didn't know the White Rose is, you know, had a dark army, the Minister Sound, and the project. Like, he was not aware of the associations. I, I find that very disbelieving to me personally. And it makes me think that Elliot, in many regards of the main personality, had targeted not only E Corp, but White Rose as well, because White Rose is also part of that 1%, 1%. So it just it seems strange to me. It always has. And maybe we're going to get some revelations to that. But for the rest of the episode, we have the team up between Price and team Elliot, if you will, to go against White Rose. And the reason Elliot is still alive is one, Price was responsible for if anybody, anyone came to that apartment building, into that room, that he was supposed to dispose of that person. If they got that far, like any investigators or anything, that take care of the situation. Um, so Elliot was lucky that it was him that was in charge of that, otherwise he would probably be dead. Um, so Elliot brings him to all state headquarters and breaks down like, hey, tell me what the Cypress Bank is and all this, and Price is like, this is not going to work, you're not going to take their money, you're not going to really, really going to stop them. Elliot presses on saying, it has, it's going to work. I'm going to do it. I need your help. And they have kind of a back and forth thing. And Price kind of explained to Elliot, like, some of the missing pieces he had. Like, there was, like, this whole intro thing that was kind of cheesy 80s VHS, like, montage thing going on to um, 
kind of a matrixy type of a deal with narration, like the architect explaining to um, Mr. Anderson, you know, Neo, what the real deal is. Like, you know, this is the seventh version of the Matrix. You're, the, you're this virus that we've created to help contain the humans. You have a decision to make. Either you can uh, save your people or save, you know, save Zion or save, you know, pick seven people and start again. So, so it was kind of weird. And I kind of get Price, the reason why Price wants to do what he's doing is when his plan to get the, the dance group all together so Alec can kind of expose them and take them out. The plan being that um, Price is, is going to resign as CEO. And I'll get into that interaction with the White Rose, but the point I want to make here, and this, con this kind of ties into the conversation he's having with Elliot, is... He says to White Rose, he's the most loyal person of the group. He has been the top dog soldier doing everything and anything that he was supposed to do. And White Rose murdered his daughter. So his loyalty is unquestionable. And I guess you can say he has, you know, regrets, particularly the loss of Angela. And he's kind of just done and he's always known like there was upon the realization that the whole purpose of the dance group was to create White Rose's project that he was a dead man marking, uh, walking and not only that but they've all mocked White Rose's project like the members of the group and so while they were you know gathering power and gathering money here White Rose was basically playing go and using their ambition and the things that they want to further his needs and he was basically moving and pivoting the pieces around and surrounding them to where basically their projects end up becoming his projects and flipping them you know you, you know, he could be the black and they're the white flipping them to black and winning while they're out there playing chess or risk and just blah, you know one percenting and gathering the power and it was so easy and they got all the connections and mind you in the montage I don't think all those world leaders are part of the dais group I honestly think it's just a few select people they interact with some powerful people and be like hey here's the money can you do this thing and the, you know the corruption and politicians and the nudging and stuff that happens in the power base occurs you know they wield influence they get the things they want done. And we see this all the time with, you, you know, the states and, and different governments, how you know, small selected people influence legislation and position of power to the point where some people that are advocating for a particular, particular policy don't even realize the policy is coming from somewhere else and is just filtered through the system or wherever to a particular way. And you don't even have to be directly paid by these people in some cases. Yes, I know I'm not using milk. I don't I don't do milk. But this is very delicious. So Surprise, so you know not quite convinced, but realizing that he Elliot's gonna still do this. And that, you know, Elliot uses the dead daughter card. Um, he does want White Rose to get down. He just does. He wants vengeance now. Um, but he's still an evil dude. There is no redemption for Price. He's going to die. He knows this. But if he he can take White Rose out as he's, as he's going out, like he's going over the cliff and grab her and just pull her on down with him. I guess that's satisfaction. Some satisfaction. Some satisfaction for him. So, 
he goes to White Rose. They have their little petty conversation about the Christmas tree. You know, White Rose is very much a perfectionist. It's a very magnificent Christmas tree, very tall, very elegant. I'm wondering if he was throwing some kind of party or whatever. Um, Price lets him know that the tinsel is kind of off. <laughs> and, and White Rose acknowledges, yeah, yeah you, you're right. And then he lets him know that he's going to resign as CEO of E Corp. And that's when they have the conversation about loyalty. And White Rose is going, like, this is not how it's done. The Deus group has to meet, they have to choose your successor. And Price is like, yeah, okay, hey, I know. He goes, they can't, you know, it's so sudden, you know, with the new year going on. He goes, yeah, okay. His project has to get out. He goes, yeah, I'm, I'm exciting. I'm sure you can figure it out. You're the man. And at this point, I was wondering why Right Rose hadn't killed Bryce at this point. I mean... The destruction of those buildings was a payback for not getting the Congo stuff on time and for jeopardizing his project. Um, why he really needed Price around? I mean, he does have Tara Wellick in there playing the, the hero position as the CTO of E Corp, but. I guess even White Rose, to some extent, does have to answer to the rest of the members of the group. I mean, he may have been playing Go and they were playing Risk and Chess and not realizing that they were being surrounded and uh, slowly being taken over by White Rose. But I'm assuming collectively they have enough position and power to probably take him out to some extent that there is some a level of vulnerability to what he is doing. Particularly with his project being so close to getting to the Congo. And we've seen a hint to how massive the project is. You know, they're in the Congo and all the mess that's associated with that. But, um... We finally see kind of a crack in White Rose's kind of veneer, if you will. We know he's very, she's very petty. We know she, you know, is very deliberate with her actions, with, um, with the things that she needs to get done. This is why stage two happened. This is even why Grant, her, uh, one of her assistants, was taken out in the barn by Leon. Their project is everything. Anyone that gets in the way is taken out. There's all sorts of countermeasures and measures, and as she stated, you know, time is everything. She times everything out to what is needed for each moment of existence. The taking out of the investigator from last episode, or earlier in the episode for, with Dom, like, they, they want 100% reassurance that things are above board, solid, not okay, not sort of, not a eh, solid 100% or we're taking you out or we're taking other people out. Um, very exacting. So when White Rose loses her emotion and saying that's not how the game is played, <laughs> Price is like, you won. You know, do whatever, but this is happening. He's putting his resignation in. He, he's kind of done. Dunzo, if you will. And this is what is going to cause this Deus group, this good ball that's taken over the world by infiltrating every sector of society after the Cold War or whatever. Um, basically um, giving Elliot his opportunity, his one shot. He has basically eight days to make it happen.
So Dom, I mentioned Dom. Dom comes in for an interview. She basically says that Santiago is a double agent because these really dramatic pauses. We think she's gonna say, oh shit, she's gonna say to her army. She doesn't. She says she works for the, a drug cartel. She gets her call from a handler asking her how the interview went. She says, you know, she's pretty sure. And she's asking, how, and Janice is asking how sure. She's like, you know, 95% sure that he bought it. Uh huh. And then Dom gets pulled by a colleague some hours later. She was at his er interrogation of this guy who was working on the drug market, this Irish fellow who was helping criminals disappear with new identities. And this intrigues Dom because she's like, oh. I can use a guy like that. Uh, but she gets pulled out of the interrogation room. I guess she's back on the job, if you will. Even though they don't explain exactly why Dom wasn't in. If Santiago's body has disappeared or he's disappeared. How come Dom wasn't at work like she took some leave time or whatever. But maybe it's understandable with cracking the 5-9 case, you know, getting Tyra Willick, finding the terrorists, you know, um, Terrence and um, Moby, uh, kind of wrapping that up and the economy coming back together, you know, and somehow, um, you know, Tyra Willick unlocking the, um, the E-Court guys, he's getting credit for that. Um, Maybe she needed a vacation. Maybe it was understandable she took some time off. But, you know, San Diego did disappear and she had to come in. So. Dom is told by another colleague that the guy jumped. The guy she just spoke to committed suicide. And she used a text message from June saying that we need 100%. So she's going to get re-interviewed again, obviously. And she needs to convince this investigator that it's 100% sure that, you know, Santiago is his cartel, the cover story. And the last tidbit I, I saw was, um, you know, Janice says, you know, let us know if you need anything, because we'll let you know we, if we need something. So, so Dom is just, she's in a pinch. Not sure where the direction of this particular storyline is going, but I'm expecting some fiery bullets of death. I, I just do. I think she probably is going to kill Janice. So Janice has got to die. She did say she's going to kill her mother. Um, but like I said, I don't think anyone is coming out alive in this story. You know, Price is a dead man. Elliot, Darlene, even White Rose. I think White Rose might get it. But then again, I also think that she might try her own fit and she might actually <laughs> freaking win. Whatever winning is, she the end of the, 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 the series, she might actually win. So that's Dom. The care price. So, Darlene calls Elliot and basically says their mom's died. And they have to go take care of that. And it was a very, it's a very humorous section, you know. They didn't get along with their mother. The mother was terrible to them. Apparently, she was nice to everybody else but them. Um, they didn't want anything to do with like cleaning out her room, packing things up. Uh, they just wanted to donate everything. Elliot finds um, his old Walkman in the in the room. You're wondering how their mother got that. They find out that she had a safety deposit box. Darlene's trying to get Elliot to connect with her, to do anything. He is not having any of it. He just wants to get this done and back to his project of taking down White Rose and the Deus Group and the Cypress Bank and the Heist, if you will. Um, Darlene probes him and asks him, what are you doing? What's going on? He skirts around it. Let's just get this done. So... They go, like, I guess the other side of town. Um, they're in the subway. 
uh, Elliot is like, why are we even going to go to the sixty pounds of box? Why are we even doing any of this? Why does it matter? She goes, what if there's adoption papers? What if there's something in there? Don't you want to know? And Elliot's like, really? no, he doesn't fucking care. And she's like, God, you're doing this all the time. Why don't you, you know, <laughs> come on. Could you please do this with me? She goes, I, you know, I know Angela's gone, you know. It would be, it would be fucking nice if my brother was here, you know. And kind of guilt trips him a little bit. They eventually go to the bank and realize that the safety deposit box was tossed out two years ago for non-payment so they have no idea what the contents are and this causes Darlene to kind of freak out a little bit and the, we'll get back to that in a moment um, but they also have a, a moment in the funeral home where basically Elliot's having a conversation with Mr. Robot Mr. Robot's like you gotta deal with your mom's death okay you're not dealing with Angela you're not dealing with anything you're you're come on and he goes I am dealing with things and he's like I have a singular focus taking out White Rose because she's going to take out us and so they're having this conversation about his uh, suppressed emotions if you will and Darlene starts having a conversation because um, they were having this fight in the, the subway and she saw his phone and she just really wants him to connect and talk to him, talking about Angela, the mother, the, the fucked up situation they're, they're in. And she finally asked him, you know, I saw your phone. Why are you, you know, hacking into Susan Jacobs' e-coin wallet? And he goes, you know, he just needs to, he goes, why? And he, he already knows because this is a name that was given to him by Price as the handler for um, the Cypress Bank at the end and we as the audience know that Susan Jacob is dead. Elliot doesn't know that Susan Jacob is dead. Price doesn't know that Susan Jacob is dead. Dark Army doesn't know Susan Jacob is dead. Susan Jacobs is a woman that was a lawyer for E Corp that was responsible for basically putting down the lawsuit that Elliot's family lost about the death of their father. And Darlene remembered her as someone who laughed at the victory of, you know, winning that lawsuit case. And basically murdered her. I mean, she could justify it, say she came back broken, whatever, but she, she, she murdered her. She wanted to murder her. She was waiting for her to come back. You know, she knew she was going to come back at some point, and she was going to kill her. Um, of course, her and, um, Cyrus, uh, they, uh, Dispose of the body at the animal shelter, if you will. Paid that dude off with you know, Susan Jacobs' some money, apparently. And it has been some months. Susan Jacobs disappeared. People have looked into it. They haven't been able to find anything. F Society did take over her home. That's something that Elliot knows. And Elliot wants to know what she did. And so Darlene gave the story about, oh, she came, she came back. And Elliot freaks out. She goes, I knew you wouldn't understand. And she's right. Elliot wouldn't understand. You wouldn't understand the emotional need for Darlene to kill this woman who's responsible for their father's death. Up to this point, prior to stage two, nobody has really suffered any consequences for um, the killing of their father. Yes, Colby got taken down, but he's not serving any prison time. He was exposed, and it kind of, kind of went away. E Corp is not, you know, there was a lawsuit, and then there was, there's a settlement. They, they're still here. Nobody's really been held a candle. No one's gone to jail. No one's died. And Susan Jacob is the only person who has died as a direct result of her actions, if you will, as a lawyer to help her company suppress the lawsuit, get it dismissed, was killed, and so. Elliot's fucked because this woman was his only connection to the Cypress Bank. Apparently she was the money handler, if you will, for the Dark Army. Which is very intriguing considering if she's the go-between, the person that handles the Cypress Bank stuff. I would think there would be like a significant amount of urgency to find her. So she could either be found or replaced, but I guess we'll get into that at some point. So Susan Jacobs is dead. Elliot needs all that information about Susan Jacobs and Elliot is going to let Darlene in and she goes, you know, I can help 
I can, you know, give you the information. You need to tell me what's going on. He's like, we're going to have to go after White Rose. And Darlene goes, why? And she goes, he's like, because as soon as that project leaves, we're dead. I'm dead, which means we're dead. And so they're back together as team one-ish, if you will. Well, Darlene acknowledges that Angela is gone. She doesn't know that she's been murdered by the Dark Army. And Elliot hasn't told her. They have piss poor communication skills because the moment Price says Susan Jacobs' name in that conversation in all safe, Elliot should have ring belts, you know. But because he and the sister don't communicate very well, and because Darlene was afraid to tell him that she had killed somebody because of his type of reaction, what kind of reaction he was going to get. And believe me, it's understandable. Like, which Elliot is she going to get? She can get the Mr. Robot reaction. She's going to get the Elliot we're seeing. She can get the third personality. You know, how bad <laughs> of a dude can Elliot be that she's afraid to tell him, her brother, somebody who's responsible or had at least a partial hand in the death of their father um, and ruining their lives, as she, as she put it back then, um, telling him something. And the fact that he's very non-commutative, that he's not um, telling, you know, uh, Darlene stuff again, um, it seems to be the modus operandi for this, these two. And I think they kind of know it and they dance around it. But it'd be interesting to see how truthful they are forward with each other because they kind of need all the cards on the table if they are going to this the two of them you know and mr robot but the you know the two of them going after um white rose and then um so they had that whole conversation in the funeral home they are um you know, they're trying to bond with one another. At least Darlie's trying to bond again with her brother, trying to get him to come back to her, in a sense. Um, Elliot is, you know, being the person he is. Um, they did have a slight bonding moment in the bank where um, they played the old Walkman before going to the funeral home. And it was basically a, like a, this little mixtape that they had made together for um, Angela's mom for Mother's Day. Um, it was basically I'm doing a news report for the Washington Township and they were all playing voices or characters or whatever and um, they were saying I love you, Happy Mother's Day along with Angela to Angela's mother. Um, why their mother had it, who knows, maybe she got it after Angela's mother's death or maybe Angela's mother kind of gave it to her. or who knows but they, they listened to it and it kind of reminded them you know the bonds that they have you know bonds that they had with Angela the bond that they have with each other um, but another thing that needs to be discussed and which triggered my whole thing about the third personality was you know she really didn't know how Elliot was going to handle anything particularly you know the way he's been so disaffected dis, you know this emo kid about everything, just not interested, so disinterested in everything. His reactions have been just like muted or blah. And she said, you know, like when I told you Veer was here, you were just meh. You know, so I don't know how you're going to react to any of the things I want to say to you or any kind of connection because you're just Angela, Veer, just everything is going on. You're just meh. And Elliot is like, what do you mean Vera is here? You know, when he showed up that night and you were just like, meh. And this freaks Elliot out. And he's like looking at Mr. Robot with like burning hateful eyes. And he goes, no, um, that's not the case. We're going to do this together. We're going to take out the Cypress Bank. We're gonna, you're going to give me everything you know about say, Susan Jacobs. We're going to figure this out. We're going to take out White Rose or we're dead people, basically. That's the plan. So Darlene goes and leaves. He goes, I'm going to be right after you. 
And then he starts yelling at Mr. Robots, like, look, you son of a bitch, we had a deal, we were supposed to be together, we are supposed to do these things, why the fuck didn't you not tell me about beer? And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about, you gotta believe me, I fucking didn't see beer, she didn't tell me that beer was here, whoa. So the both of them are looking at each other, it's like, if she didn't tell us about beer, then who the hell did she tell? And that's when we get the end scene about the third personality. So. I don't know what really fundamentally, like, I understand Darlene and Elliot being together to go after White Rose. That's a nice pop point movement. But I don't know what any of this means. Like, the third personality, how does Veer, uh, who's supposed to show up next episode, factors in and everything, what White Rose's reaction is going to be fundamentally be towards Price and even possibly to Elliot, because the whole getting everybody in one room place seems to be like something very difficult and daunting and something that White Rose doesn't even really want to do, particularly with so close of her, you know, project being shipped out, if you will. Um, so there's there's a lot of there. Um, Dom being the FBI and under the thumb of the Dark Army and just, I don't know if the girl is going to make it. Oh, she seems so exhausted and so stressed out. And it seems to be really kind of affecting her. I would say as the badass FBI agent that she is, I think people are going to notice the shift in her personality. Um, we'll see how it does as far as, you know, where that storyline goes. I mean, we're very early on. There's 13 episodes, so there's 11 more episodes to go. And then they each one has been very extremely exhausting because they've been more of of big plot revelations but also like a lot of emotional revelations and making you question things you knew before you know for example about Elliot, Darlene, what Veer's relationship to everything is um even White Rose like just that moment of anger she had towards uh, Price was enough to show that, that she had some vulnerability uh all these players out here, you just like, ugh, you're so stressed, like, okay, someone's going to get it this episode, what's going to happen? And then there's Tyra Wellick, who's been hinted at, like, he was in the first episode, and I don't think I talk about how he was, you know, CTO and had this massive schedule and he didn't want to do it, you know, basically got everything he wanted and he's miserable. Uh, he's being lauded in the, in the media as the um, hero that bringing, you know, um, all the jobs into existence is because of him. So, where he factors in back into all this would be interesting. Um, I don't know why, if White Rose wants him as the new CT, uh, CEO. There might be somebody else. Maybe it was supposed to be Scott Knowles that would eventually replace Price. Uh, but Scott Knowles is off the board. So, there's, there's all sorts of things that you know have to be addressed on the show and it seems a struggle I would think on Team Elliot's side that for the two of them in eight days to be able to somehow rob a bank and take out the funds for White Rose to somehow disrupt her project without being taken out by the Dark Army without I don't know the FBI coming after them again some other shenanigan factors um and it's just the two of them. They don't have their full team because their full team is dead. You know, Angela's dead. Trenton's dead. Mulby's dead. Ramon's dead. Um, Cyrus, Cypress, Kurt, um, Darlene's boy toy is dead. Her boyfriend is dead. And they also don't have the resources of the Dark Army. So, I mean, I know Ali is supposed to be like this super hacker dude, but I don't know. <laughs> really don't know <laughs> um but um yeah so team Elliot and Darlene are together again there's a third personality Price is uh resigning as CEO 
Dom is under the, ar uh, the thumb of the Dark Army. White Rose. Still at it. Trying to get her plant going. Still in the game, if you will. And that's where we are for episode 402, Payment Required. <sighs> yeah. Um, hopefully, this the next episode won't take me a week to do. I had some stuff that came up. It, it was still a very exhausting episode, but not the way the first episode was. But hopefully I can try to get these back on a regular schedule. Uh, this is Hiroja Scheidt. This is F Society IRC Podcast. And I am logging off for now.